During examination for the WBC Pulse Cells RBC and culture to rule out the urinary tract infection. Stool examination for cyst and ova to rule out the parasitic infestation. Radiological investigations include X-ray of chest, paranasal sinuses, sacroiliac joint, and lumbar spine. Skin tests, these include a tuberculin test, KVM test, and toxoplasmin test. So, these are the tests which are needed for diagnosis of the uveitis that is hematological in that blood sugar level, CBC that is complete blood count, then blood uric acid serological test, then urine examination, stool examination, radiological investigation that is X-ray of chest, paranasal sinus, sacroiliac joint and lumbar spine and then skin test. These include a tuberculin test and toxoplasmin test. So, the treatment of iridocyclitis. In that, first one is a non-specific treatment. That is, in that first is local therapy. So, locally, a midriatic cycloplegic drug, commonly used drug in 1% atropine sulfate eye ointment or a drop, instilled two to three times in a day and in case of the allergy other cycloplegics like two percent humatropin or one percent cyclopentalate eye drop may be instilled three to four times a day alternatively for a more powerful cycloplegic effect a subconjunctival injection of 0.25 ml medricane uh, that is a mixture of atropine, adrenaline and propane should be given. So this is all about the local therapy in the treatment of aridocyclic. Then second is a corticosteroid which are administered locally and very effective. And third is a broad spectrum antibiotic drug. B, that is systemic therapy. In that corticosteroid, that is systemic corticosteroid, are usually indicated in intractable anterior resistant to topical therapy. Two, that is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, that is NSAIDs, such as aspirin, can be used where steroids are contraindicated. And third one is the immunosuppressive drug. These should be used only in disparate and extremely serious cases of UVI. C, that is a physical nature. In that, one is a hot formation and two, that is a dark vowel, are used physical as a physical nature to treat the iridocytes. Then the next topic is the posterior posterior uveitis. Posterior uveitis refer to the inflammation of the choroid that is choroiditis. Since the outer layer of the retina are in close contact with the choroid and also depend on it for the nourishment and choroidal inflammation almost always involves the adjoining retina and the resultant region is called chorioretinite. So posterior uveitis is referred to inflammation of choroid. So choroid is a posterior part of the uveal tract. So inflammation of choroid is called as choroiditis and also it is called as the posterior uveitis. In the choroid, there is a close contact with the retina and it also depends on 
substitute for the nourishment. So the choroidal inflammation almost always involves the resultant sleep called as a pleuritis. Etiology and pathology. Same as described for uveitis, clinical types. First one is a suppurative choroiditis, that is, purulent inflammation of the choroid. And it is usually does not occur alone and almost always forms the part of endophthalmitis. So, suppurative inflammation of choroiditis. Suppurative inflammation of choroid is called as a suppurative choroiditis. It is a purulent inflammation of choroid and it usually does not occur alone and almost always form a part of the endo. Then a non-suppurative choroiditis. It may be non-granulomatic or granulomatic. That is more common. Granulomatous is more common. Non-suppurative choroidal inflammation may be characterized by exudation and cellular infiltration. So, the non-suppurative choroidal inflammation is characterized by there is exudation that is discharge and cellular infiltration. Non-suppurative choroiditis is usually bilateral and morphologically depending upon the number and the location of the lesion and can be classified into the diffuse, disseminated and circumscribed localized choroiditis. In that first is a diffuse choroiditis. It refers to a large spreading lesion that involving most of the choroidal tissue and it is usually a tubercular or syphilitic in origin. Second is a disseminated choroiditis. It is characterized by a multiple but small area of inflammation scattered over the greater part of the choroid. And such condition may be due to syphilis or tuberculosis. But in many cases, the cause is obscure. Circumscribed, localized, or the focal choroiditis mm -hmm. characterized by a single patch or few small of inflammation localized in a particular area and depending upon the location of the region it exists. So, there is a diffuse choroiditis that is large spreading region involving most of the choroidal tissue and usually tubercular or syphilitic in origin. Hello? Uh, me lecture the day, sir. Sir, call to my lecture. Hello, sir. Sir, sir. And disseminated choroiditis. It is characterized by a multiple but small area of inflammation that is scattered over the greater part of the colon. And such a condition may be due to syphilis or tuberculosis. But in many cases, the cause is obscure. And 
circumscribed that is localized focal choroiditis is characterized by a single patch or a few small patches of inflammation localized in a particular area and depending upon the location of the lesion it is so this is a diagram of the hill lesion of disseminated choreo Then in the circumscribed, that is local or the focal choroiditis, there are central choroiditis, juxtafecal or juxtapapillary choroiditis, anterior peripheral choroiditis and equatorial choroiditis are involved. Then the clinical picture of it contains the symptom that is first one is a defective region. It is usually mild due to the Vitreous has but may be severe as in a central choroiditis. Photopsia, it is a subjective sensation of flashes of light resulting due to the irritation of rods and cords. Black spot floating in front of the eyes, it is very common complaint of such a patient and they occur due to the large exudative clumps in the vitreous. So, in the symptoms, there is a defective region, photopsia and the black spot floating in front of the eyes are seen. Fourth is a metamorphosis. Herein, patients perceive a distorted images of the object the result due to the alteration in the retinal counter caused by a raised patch of coronary. Micropsia which result due to the separation of visual cells is a common complaint and in this then the object appears smaller than they are. The microscopia that is Perception of the object larger than they are may be occurred due to the crowding together of the rods and cord. So there is maybe micropsia or macropsia. In the micro, that result in the separation of the visual cell is a common complaint. The object appear smaller than they are. And in macro, the object look larger than they are. It is due to the crowding together of rods and cords. Then, positive scotoma. Perception of a mixed large spot in the field of the vision corresponding to the lesion may be noted by the many patient. That is, it contains signs that is vitreous opacity. Features of a patch of coralline. <laughs> 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 Kai discussion sale. Nature stock kuruka. Hmm. Kai dale malapas sanga zara. Kai ne mam mute unmute zala uta. Unmute zala mata. Biomystically. Hello? 
हेलो यस मैम हेलो यस मैम ऐकू येते मी काय बोलते ते मैम नेटवर्क इश्यू परत बोला हेलो लेक्चर कंटिन्यू करू हां मैम करा झाले का डिस्कशन हो मैम चला इन अट्रोपिक स्टेज और हिल स्टेज व्हेन एक्टिव इन्फ्लेमेशन सबसाइड द अफेक्टेड एरिया बिकम मोर शार्पली डिफाइंड then the complication these include extension of inflammation to the anterior urea complicated cataract vitreous degeneration macular edema and secondary peripheral periphlebitis retaining and retinal detachment so the treatment of it it is broadly on the lines of anterior uveitis that is non specific therapy that consists of topical and systemic corticoid corticosteroids second one is a specific treatment is required for the causative disease such as toxoplasmosis toxokeriasis tuberculosis and syphilis etc so the treatment is broadly on the line of the anterior uveitis that is the anterior part inflammation of uveitis in that non specific therapy that is topical and systemic corticosteroids can be used and specific treatment is required for the causative disease so this is about the posterior uveitis and in the next topic we will start with the purulent uveitis in the posterior uveitis we will study its definition etiology pathology clinical types that is suppurative choroiditis non suppurative choroiditis diffuse choroiditis disseminated choroiditis circumscribed localized or the focal choroiditis its symptoms that is defective vision photopsia black spot floating in front of the eyes metamorphosis macropsia micropsia then positive scotoma and the signs that is vitreous opacity feature of patch of choroiditis and in atrophic stage of the heel stage and then complication of posterior uveitis and its treatment so in the next lecture we will start with the purulent uveitis till that have a good day and we stop here